Well, good afternoon. It's Charlie Z L Two CTM. Well, it's um, New Year's Eve, and um, I've just been sitting here reflecting on the year and uh, thinking about what um, I'd like to do in the new year. Um, this radio here, which we've been covering in the in the last um, number of videos, for all intents and purposes, for me now is is pretty well done. Um, the software has now been updated to accommodate um, the 80 and 40 meter dual band function. So the switch now just switches between the two bands and um, the old frequency is saved, the new frequency is brought back up for the respective bands and vice versa. So that's, that's all pretty well done. Um, there's pretty well nothing more I want to do on that. Um, I'll talk about the power amplifier in a sec. So like I say, I'm now sort of starting to think about um, what to do for the next build. Now the last time I uh, was looking for ideas, um, it came, became pretty clear that there was a bit of a feeling of doing a, uh, a non-radio project for the next build. Um, and I'll just sort of keep shooting over here. Um, some of the ideas that came up the last time were, and you know, I'm open to ideas, so I'll just throw this out there. I'm happy to solicit ideas and, and we'll go from there. And I've got some other thoughts I'd like to do in parallel. Uh, one option was an FT8 transceiver um, for say 40 slash um, 30 meters. Um, I would assume that would require some kind of computer interface. Uh, the last time I used a computer radio or computer or digital more the point mode was way back in slow scan TV, which was some years ago. So I haven't actually played around with that. So that's that's an option. Uh, another idea that was thrown up was a uh, an Arduino controlled um, antenna tuner. Um, just thinking about that one, I think an approach there would be to use a series of relays that would then switch in um, capacitance and inductance to, to null out uh, the SWR. Um, so that's uh, another potential idea. Um, another idea that was thrown up was a, um, an SWR slash, um, slash power meter for the QRP. Uh, so around that sort of 5 watts. Um, that's certainly um, an idea. I don't know if that would, would want to be uh, with a um, mechanical meter or potentially feeding um, that voltage into, say, an Arduino and then doing something on a display. I don't know. Uh, a meter would certainly be um, would certainly be easy, but you know, meter is a little bit more difficult to get hold of. But um, you know, that that is an idea and open to suggestions on on what that may look like. Um, another idea that was thrown up it would be to make a um, a low level RF source for receiver uh, measurements. I guess something similar to this. this is a very simple one here. Just a little RF oscillator there with two um, crystals, one for the 80 meter band and one for the uh, 40 meter band. Um, going through a, um, for a quick, good 20 dB attenuator there. So um, that's that's an option here is to build some kind of uh, I'll assume it had to be calibrated um, RF source for uh, receiver tests. Um, I, I, another topic that I wouldn't mind revisiting for myself personally would be some power amplifier experiments. Um, I'd like to... I've sort of got, got quite happy with the push-pull amplifiers, so I wouldn't mind um, re-looking at that as a, as a topic. Um, this particular amplifier here in this radio used those two LDMOS devices. Um, as was pointed out, those two devices are now uh, obsolete, um, which is a shame. And as I've said many times, um, I'm trying to use commonly available parts to, to encourage others to give it a go. So there's no point trying to use parts which you just can't get hold of. Um, so. My thinking is what I wouldn't mind doing is is, is having a look at power amplifiers as a, as a topic. Now I've got quite a bit of this sort of copper board lying around. Um, use another piece of this uh, and then have say four BD139s, um, so two in parallel in a push-pull arrangement um, and then have that as the basis of the, of the power amplifier. Um, I think I did some rough calculations the other day and there should be uh, if I derate those two devices, or those BD139s, um, by a good chunk, then I should be able to get at least 16 odd watts out of a, um, an amplifier in that arrangement. So that is something I wouldn't mind doing as a, as a, a topic as a whole, is, is power amplifiers. Um, 
Another option is um, an SDR revamp, and what I mean by that is um, this is an SDR rig that it's in a bit of a state of disrepair here. It's based around the uh, the Tensi um, uh, 3.5, if I recall. Um, here, uh, the heart of this one here, and the two mixers were any 612s um, and that was providing the two quadrature signals into the audio ports of the Tensi. Um, and then using the the, the, um, um, the analysis software libraries, um, doing all the maths in here to then demodulate that to produce the audio going into the audio amplifier. Um, so one option is to, to revamp um, probably more so the, the RF side of the house here, um, up until the AF. So re-looking at this whole thing here. Um, maybe moving away from the any 612s to something else, I don't know. But that's one option is to revamp the RF side. Um, it would be really nice to be able to nut out in terms of the um, the SI5351 actually producing um, the quadrature output signals um, that Hans Summers has managed to do uh, with QRP Labs. Um, I just have not had a real chance to, to, to look at that myself, but I'd love to be able to do that which would do away with that whole circuit board there, which produces the two quadrature clock signals uh, through those two orange wires there. It would be nice to do that sort of nated, uh, natively from within the SI5351. Another option with a revamp here would be to replace that liquid crystal display with something akin to what's used here in the clock, um, and then which would allow, if I just spin back there, allow um, the frequency domain to be displayed and then to show where the various signals are. Um, within the, the the bandwidth of the of the um, of the SDR radio, so that would be another option. There would be to to do that. So that's something which is another option. Um, could uh, also do a um, series of videos on on the, on a clock. I have no idea if um, clocks of interest to people. They are to me. I, I like clocks. Um, this one is a little desk clock which I've had for a long time, based around an Arduino, a, uh, an LCD there on the back. Pretty simple as a, um, a GPS receiver, and once it's locked onto the satellites, it just feeds through um, a series of NMEA um, sentences to the Arduino, and then that's just passing out the date and the time data. The software then is just drawing a series of circles and a series of arcs, uh, so there's a bit of trig uh, trigonometry there going on, depending on the time, to to, to draw a clock face. So that may be of interest to people. So I'm certainly happy to. Um, to throw a little bit more details on uh, about that. Um, now, um, what I am going to do uh, in parallel with any project, um, and I probably won't at this stage of the game do any videos on it because I'm conscious it's yet another radio, but I personally want to rebuild um, my tramping rigs, or a tramping rig, more the point. Um, I've got a couple here which they go really well, but I just wouldn't mind leveraging off some of the more recent designs, for example, off the uh, the main rig here, um, and then sort of feed that back into the portable rigs. So this one here is a, uh, an 80 meter rig, and this one over here is a 40 meter rig. Um, I wouldn't mind, like I say, rebuilding those. Get away from the two OLED displays there. Um, they were quite RF noisy. Uh, maybe go towards the same VFO setup that I had for the CW radio. That worked really well. So I've replicated the VFO there, but um, it's just been sitting on the on the side and hasn't been used. So it'd be nice to sort of use that as the uh, the VFO and the uh, the beat frequency oscillator. Um, a couple of kind watches of the um, of the YouTube series um, gave me, which is very nice of them, um, some mixes. So I, I won't mention the names on air, but they know who they are, and I and I thank them very very much. Um, I was given some SBL ones, which was very nice. Uh, these are JMS 11Xs, so um, it's another 7 dBm mixer designed for 5 to 1900 MHz. Um, I was also given some Tough 3s, so these are a little, again, 7 dBm devices um, designed for 0.15 to 400 MHz. So this is an SBL1 here, so you can sort of see the size difference there between the two of them. So uh, yeah, that would be ideal for... Um, replacing the mixes in a, uh, a tramping receiver just to be able to compact things down and, and to be able to dedicate a little bit more room, say, to the, the power amplifiers. Um, so like I say, I want to do that in parallel 
uh, with any build and that would certainly be the intent. It would also allow me a chance to um, have another look at the power amplifiers. At the moment these are, are J-Bots. Um, Farhan, if I recall, um, it's his um, um, his amplifier. Um, this is my version of that using uh, 2 and 3053s um, with a slight few variations in the circuit but it would be nice to sort of go back to um, the grassroots, get the old calculator out and then um, um, and then design from first principles uh, a good PA there for that sort of QRP in slightly higher range. Um, so that would be um, something, you know, another opportunity to, to play around with that. Um, uh, something else I do want to sort of say, and I've said it quite a few times, I'm going to say it again. Um, all of these videos, for example, this radio over here, um, and these radios down here, is the world according to me. Um, I don't profess to be an RF design expert. I am no way one of those. Um, all of these layouts and all of these designs are essentially the world according to me. It's a video log of what I did, what I was thinking at the time, what I worked out. Um, I know there are there are problems. I know they don't um, or they're not in line with uh, the proper theory and probably not in line with the uh, the textbook way of doing things. Um, certainly th having things close and maybe lack of shielding and, and sort of laid out like this. But at the end of the day, um, you know, these are my radios. Um, this is how I like it. I like to see the components laid out. I like to be able to look at stuff and think what it's doing as I'm using it. So, you know, I make no apologies for that. But I do want to say, you know, and I, and I hope I do not come across as a know-it-all, and I do not want to, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I, I'm just an amateur when it comes to this. Um, and the whole idea of these videos is to try and, um, I guess, demonstrate or show and encourage others to give it a go. Um, if I can do it with hopefully simple and easy to obtain parts, then um, hopefully that sort of encourage others to give it a go too. Um, so like I say, that's just a, a big caveat that I wouldn't mind saying there. Um, just some thing in here, my first, I don't want to say first love, that's probably a bit strong. Um, my interests do lie in the HF band. Um, I don't have too many interests in VHF and above. Um, you know, every man for himself. You know, my interests at the moment are, like I say, in the HF band. So um, that's where I'd like to, um, to keep any future projects. <laughs> Okay, I think I have probably rambled on um, long enough, so I'm going to say 73 is here, and I'm certainly going to wish everybody a very happy new year, uh, and I'm certainly looking forward to uh, 2019 and getting the old uh, calculator back out and some bit of paper and starting to think about what the next projects may be. Uh, more than happy to take suggestions, and uh, I'll, I'll drop those down and see if we can come up with a consensus, and... Um, and we'll start to work on that. So like I say, 73 is Happy New Year. And um, hope everybody has a safe time in the holidays. And we'll see everybody in the new year. Cheers all and 73s.